Hello, my name is Stephanie Ritter Mata. I'm the present Courageous Living, and my passion in life is to help my clients maximize the gifts and talents within them and go further and farther than they ever thought possible. And today I want to talk to you about life's interruptions. You know, a few days ago I was listening to Mel Robbins, who I'm a huge fan of, everyone knows that who knows me, and she was talking about during this time with COVID-19 about disappointments and that people are dealing with disappointments. You know, um, you know uh, seniors in high schools that, that may not be able to walk down the aisle to get their diploma because of the, you know, we can't have a gathering of people. Colleges saying, okay, everyone's off campus, now you have to go online. Um, loss of jobs, loss of, in loss of incomes. And, and sadly, even losing a loved one, you're not able to really gather together as a family and friends to celebrate the life of that person. And so we have these disappointments that are out there because of everything that's happening. But I believe it stems from an interruption in our life. And so we have the interruption of our life, and then off of that is an a, a, a offshoot of disappointments, and then off of that could be anger, fear, anxiety, emotional eating, um, you know, some type of behavior that may not be healthy, or, you know, we're learning a lot about ourselves individually. You may not realize what a compulsive eater you've become because of this emotional eating. Or maybe you're constantly cleaning, you know, trying to do something to keep busy. We're all dealing with this differently. And so there's, off of the disappointments, we have all these kind of emotional things that start to happen to us. And so, out of life interruptions, I want to share with you a story about Jairus um, in Mark chapter 5 in the Bible. Now, some say Jairus, um, I pronounce it Jairus. Now, this story I actually preached out of about 18 years ago when I was pregnant with my daughter. And I spoke at a Wednesday night uh, prayer service, and I shared on this, not due to our circumstances of today, but because it really spoke to me about how we can have interruptions that happen to us and the importance of kind of staying arm in arm with Jesus during it. So this man comes to Jesus and he says, you know, his daughter is at the point of death and he needs him to go to her and touch her and heal her. And it says they start to walk to his home. But here comes the interruption. Now remember, there's a crowd of people around Jesus. And now we have this woman who has what they call an issue of blood and hemorrhaging of blood. And she says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. So I don't know if she crawled on the ground. I don't know if God supernaturally moved her to the front of the crowd and she touched his hem, the, the hem of his garment. I don't know. But Jesus said, who touched me? And everyone's like, well, there's a, there's a crowd pressing against you already. How do we know who touched you? And he, the woman then acknowledged it was her. Mind you, there's a massive healing taking place for this woman. And yet we have a father who is desperately wanting his daughter to stay alive and needs Jesus to get to his home. Now, all of us deal with impatience at some point in time. And I have to believe in Jairus' mind and his thoughts. He was like, come on, come on, come on. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. And yet Jesus is taking time to minister to somebody else. You know, it's really easy to think that God turns his back on us when he really hasn't. It, it really comes down to us turning our back on him. You know, and so Jairus is still, from what I can tell from the scripture, he's still there. He's still present with Jesus. But Jesus takes the time to have this conversation with somebody. And, and this woman, of course, is very thankful she's healed doesn't realize there's a, a situation, a crisis happening in this man's life. See, it's easy for us to really judge it. I'm sure Jairus could have said, hey, I have a daughter dying. I don't really care about this woman who has a, a, a minor health issue. You know, it's really easy at this time to say, I'm dealing with some really, a lot of anxiety, and yet you have someone who's lost someone. And we can't judge each other during this time because each of us, life is impacting us on a personal level. And so here we have a woman with the issue of blood who says, I just want to touch his garment. And you have Jairus who has a daughter who is going to die soon. Two si different situations, both incredibly important to those individuals and also important to Jesus because he took time for both of them. Now, he heals the woman. Now, the people from Jairus' home comes to him and they say, your daughter has passed on. Don't, why bother the teacher anymore? And here's what Jesus says. 
He says in chapter 5, verse 36, he says, overhearing what was being spoken, he, um, he says, do not be afraid any longer, only believe. See, Jesus, I'm sure he knew when, G, when Jairus heard that his daughter had passed away, I'm sure his heart sank. If he didn't fall to his, his knees, his heart sank. So I feel like that was like the arm of God scooping up Jairus saying, come on, we're going. And they did. Jesus didn't take any of the people with him around him because, you know, it was just him and Jairus. Touches his daughter and she's healed. So why do I share that? Because in my Bible, I had written down in writing interruptions. So somewhere I heard a message or when I was preaching this, I knew it was an interruption. We all are facing interruptions in our life. Loss of jobs, loss of loved ones, loss of income, um, loss of schedules. And there's all these interruptions that are happening to us during this time. And we have to find a way to figure out how to handle it. And out of that interruption is coming disappointments. You know, I remember my daughter saying to me, um, during this time because her college of course went online and she said mom I had a schedule in place I had my class schedule I had my day that I was gonna work on my homework and then I was gonna work uh, she was working in a local coffee shop and she's now that's all gone and I said well you know what you have to do honey you have to find out a new schedule you know, we all have to find out a new way of life and how we're going to cope through this. It's an interruption and we either let that interruption really uh, take a toll on us and make us mad and angry and make us do nothing. Or we can say, okay, I have to come up with a new schedule. I have to come up with a new way of everyday routine. Identify, if there's a disappointment that's branching off of that interruption, identify what that disappointment is. It's so important to do that because a lot of times in our head we go, oh, well, you know, it's not important. What I'm feeling isn't important. Yes, it is important. Yes, there's people that are dealing with magnitude uh, life issues out there, but you are important too. And so if you can write it down, what is the disappointment that you're facing right now or disappointments? What are you facing right now? Write it down. Because getting it out of your head onto paper, I don't care if it's just even a post-it card, you know, a note, a note card, or like a post-it like this. Just write it down. You can throw it away later. It doesn't matter. But getting it out of the head, you know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak. And I believe that by getting this out and declaring what it is that you're disappointed about is a way of getting it out of you. And so it's not going to marinate in, in anger and any other negative things in there. It's going to come out. Put it down there. Identify it. And then what I want you to do, and this is what I do with my, when I, my life coach clients when they're dealing with situations, is if it's a really difficult time they're going through, like a divorce or loss of a job, a lot of times we'll talk about in five to six months, put a goal out there. But put something out there that's a goal for you because it will give you something to look forward to, give you something to motivate you every single day and put that out there. And if you want to write it down, then write it down. And the other thing is have a, a visual cue or picture of what that is. It's like an anchor for you. So put a picture of what that six months is. If it's a vacation, going to the beach, the wedding. And the thing I want you also to write down is I am excited because, but when you use the words, I'm excited, you're starting to get those, you know, that excitement going inside of your brain and in your body. And now you start thinking about it. And the more you tell yourself that I'm excited and you see that quote, you will stay motivated to get to that end result. Now it may not be in six months, maybe it's five months, maybe it's seven months, but at least put something there to help navigate during this unusual time that we're in. Now, the other thing I want to share with you, just a couple scriptures real briefly, is in Matthew 6. And this is another very um, well-known uh, scripture. And it's in Matthew 6, 33 and 34. It says, First seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You know, and that's so true today, um, if, if ever a time to really meditate on that scripture. We can easily, you know, we, we have news coming at us all day long. But if you're starting to get anxious about this and worried about what's tomorrow, what's next week, what's this, you know, sometimes you have to turn the TV off. And so don't worry about, you can plan. 
course, you can plan accordingly to what's going on, but don't be anxious because we don't know what the troubles are going to be for tomorrow. Now, another scripture I want to share with you is in Psalm, um, Psalm 62, verse 8. And it says, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. You know, we can be honest with God and say, Lord, I don't know what's happening. I don't understand what's happening. And we can pour out our heart before him. Just like when your children or your loved ones pour out their heart to you about some situation that they're concerned about. God doesn't mind that at all. He wants you to come to him. And he is a refuge. You know, when I think about this scripture, I think about my son. He was about three or four. And I remember in our house, the way it was situated on the property, that when there was like a thunderstorm coming through and the wind, it sounded like a train. And I remember this one night, my son climbed into my bed and he got under the covers and there's a thunderstorm going on outside and that wind is kicking up and I can literally feel his body shaking. And I've never felt that with my children before, but he was literally pressed into my back and just shaking, trembling. And I remember I just turned over and I just held him because he was scared. He didn't know if the storm was gonna end. He didn't know if tomorrow the sun was gonna shine. He didn't know about tomorrow. He just knew in the moment, man, there's a loud storm going on. And he came to me, I was his refuge. And my friends, God is our refuge. You can press into God, cuddle into God, and he will hold you. Even if you're shaking and you're not sure what's going on right now, you're not sure about tomorrow, he is your refuge. And so my friends, there's some things I wanna share with you and I'm gonna put them in, in the comments below. Mel Robbins has on Facebook called Stay Connected with Mel Robbins. And this is something she does every day at noon Eastern time where she just shares topics, helping people kind of navigate these uncharted waters that we're in right now. Um, and also Maria Shriver um, has on Instagram a live broadcast that she does around 5 p.m. Eastern time. And she just talks with different people on, on different topics. And again, they're all about encouraging us and, and, and motivating us and inspiring us. Sometimes it's just people that are doing these things into the communities and she'll have them on her Instagram uh, live as a way to just share what other people are doing in the community. Um, Catherine uh, Schwarzenegger Pratt is doing something very similar. She has also a live broadcast on uh, Instagram. And Christopher uh, Paloha, an actor, uh, does a lot of movies on Hallmark Channel. He also has been having, I believe it's more on Sundays, on Instagram and on Facebook, where he is just going live and whoever wants to join the conversation, they can just talk and share and what they're doing and how they're kind of navigating this time. And again, it's a way for the communities to come together. And it's a way to bring people together. I don't know anyone on these um, live broadcasts, but I go to them because they actually, they motivate me and inspire me um, to kind of get out of my head and to think about what the need is in my community. And so I want to share that with you and I will put those in the post below um, the links to their um, different social media platforms so my friends again remember life has interruptions and we all have to face them but out of those interruptions can come the disappointment so it's so important to remember to identify the disappointment have that phrase of I'm excited because you know have that six month goal and then I'm excited because I get to go on that vacation whatever that is so have a six month uh, goal out there, why are you excited about it, and then have a picture, an anchor, a visual cue to put with that, to, again, to keep you on focus and keep you on track. So my friends, until next time, just remember, you know what, God loves you. Um, Acts 2.21 says, those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so just call upon him if you need him at any point in time. He can be anywhere at any time. He hears my prayers at the same time he hears your prayers. And that's a pretty amazing guy.